Good, good morning, uh, good afternoon, depending on when you are watching this. This is a re-recording of our Title I annual meeting that we hosted on October 6th. Um, this is the purpose of this is so that you can have some information about what was covered. So I'm going to share my screen and show the uh, presentation and essentially walk you through what you missed. And if you have any questions, I'll have my contact information on the screen uh, for your viewing. So give me one second and I'll share my screen. We'll get started. All right. So the purpose of this meeting is so that we can go over what um, essentially a Title I school is and what is required for a um, school to be a Title I to talk about the parents' right and other school requirements. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me uh, at the information which I'll put up at the end. So Title I is a part of a federal law that grant that um, schools get money to help st meet uh, student educational needs, provide staff with uh, professional development, and support school and family partnerships. So in order for us to be a Title I school, we have to be over uh, 67, I'm sorry, over 70% um, free and reduced lunch. So what does it mean for our school? It means that additional funds to support students, teachers, and families. These funds are over and above what the district provides. And with that information, uh, funds are concentrated in areas of instruction for students, professional development for our teachers, and activities to strengthen our partnership with families. So what does it mean for our school? We have our Title I annual meeting, which we had on October 6th, 5.30. Um, we have decision-making committees, also called the SAC, uh, school, ad school Advisory Council, um, parents' right to be involved. We have a parent and family engagement plan, which we'll all discuss today, our school parent compact, which I'll also discuss, parents' right to know notifications and surveys. So school-wide Title I programs are for all students, all teachers, and all families benefit. So our school-wide plan is essentially a way for our school to work with collabor collaboratively as partners with students, parents, families, and communities to provide materials, resources, and support that assist relative awareness and engagement towards student achievement and learning gains. We will provide different differentiation of instruction, small group instruction, targeted guided practice, and monitor data. We will celebrate the progress and ongoing success at the classroom level, grade level, and school-wide. To meet our expected outcomes, we are using this year's Title I funds for the following. We have uh, classroom instruction of uh, teaching positions, we have a math teacher that is um, funded under Title I. She teaches um, eighth grade pre-algebra. We have a social services facilitator, and she will support parents to increase family engagement and support families. She engages the business community and enhances school and business partnership. Um, we have a single school culture coordinator who is responsible for um, basically planning, lesson based planning, um, instructions through PLC and sharing and building teacher capacity through student data analysis. The learning team facilitators meet with the teachers on a biweekly basis to discuss data and student achievement strategies. We also have extended learning opportunities for students to come to before school tutoring, after school tutoring, and Saturday tutorial. We also have an online subscription with Achieve 3000 to help students with um, developing their literacy skills um, and also different various supplies that we need for teachers, such as chart paper, um, copy paper, things like that in order to help us teach the students. 
All right, so some of our family engagement trainings, um, we wanted to increase the home communication by providing tools for parents to connect with us and understand how we use the parent gateway. Uh, we also provided at home learning tips. So one of the professional developments that we had or family trainings that we had was to teach families about the parent gateway. We also taught the parents about um, Hero K-12 at our um, curriculum night and dads and donuts. And those are just basically ways to monitor student progress and be able to communicate um, with, with teachers and also assisting students with their homework. All right. So research shows that parents and family members are involved Students are more likely to earn better grades, do better on tests, attend school, adapt to change, have better social skills, prom be promoted to the next grade, graduate, and continue their education. So our parent and family engagement plan describes how we will involve families in written education, written with the input of the school's family and input, during the stakeholder input meeting, shared during SAC, and um, the summaries were sent home for all the families. We also uploaded that on our uh, website, and I'll give you a link to that uh, at the end of this presentation. So our mission statement is to bridge the gap between parent, school, community, and improve relationships and partnerships between these entities and empower families to be actively involved in their child's education. It basically tells us, tells how we're going to work with parents, families, and community to increase student achievement, how we train teachers to work with families, how we assist parents through uh, continuous communication, such as our newsletter, curriculum night, and parent-teacher conferences. We also share information through parent link, voicemails, emails, newsletters, social media postings, school flyers, marquee, and SAC meetings. So here is a link to our, um, our school website. And once you uh, click on the Title I section, you'll find our parent family engagement plan in, in um, addition to other items that are relevant to uh, Title I. So you just click on that link that's in here in the presentation and also uh, drop it in the chat box. So here are some of the parent trainings that we have. Um, we had the Dads and Donuts on September 20th, or September 2nd. And the purpose of that one was to invite dads to get them connected to our Hero K-12, which is a um, way for parents to keep track of student behavior um, and communicate with teachers. Um, the SIS Gateway, another way to monitor student progress in the classroom and also um, be able to communicate with teachers. And then in February, we have successful strategies for EOC math assessments in February. Our school and parent compact, this is a document that shows what um, that was written by parents, family members, and school personnel that sets out the responsibilities of students, parents, family members, and school staff striving to raise student achievement. That was sent home um, in the student's backpack. There's also a link to it on our website under Title I. If you want to read over that again, many of you have signed it and returned it. And the link can also be found in this presentation where it says uh, parent compact. In the meeting, we um, opened it up for questions, but there were no questions during the meeting. But if you have any questions about the compact, feel free to contact myself. Uh, families also have the right to know about the professional qualifications of their child's teacher. And if non-teacher personnel are providing instruction to their child, and their, um, if so, their professional qualifications. So we sent home those uh, teacher out of field letters to parents on October 12th, that's today. Um, and so if you're 
child um, is affected by one of those positions, you will see the letter in your child's backpack. So families must be informed if their child is taught for more for four or more weeks by a teacher who does not meet the certification requirements. And that's the reason why you re will receive that letter. And you're also to be informed how your child is performing on state tests like the FSA, um, EOC, and SSA. All right. Okay. Also, the goal of the um, migrant education program is to assist all migrant students in meeting challenging academic standards and achieving graduation from high school with an education that prepares them for responsible citizenship, further learning, and productive employment. So um, we ensure that the needs of the migrant students are met um, and help them overcome barriers like interrupting of school, social uh, um, isolation, and transition to high school or college uh, to improve the opportunities of migrant students by helping them by uh, transition to school, meeting the challenges of state and district academic content, and to graduate from high school. So the first step is to, to find who those students are. And we find who those students are by um, interviewing them um, by a trained recruiter using federal and state eligibility requirements. Here is the person's contact information who is um, over the program. His name is Jorge Etchegary. Students experiencing homelessness um, has the right to an education. We have the McKinney-Vento program that helps um, families who live in a shelter, motel, or vehicle, or campground on the street in abandoned buildings um, and motels or doubled up temporarily living with relatives or friends due to hardship. And we have a contact person who provides school supplies, uniform, supplemental services, and free school meals, set up transportation, find community support and resources, decide which school would be best for that child, communicate with the school, and so much more. So um, our um, McKinney-Vento questionnaire can be done by um, calling that phone number. Um, if you need additional assistance, you can contact that phone number, I apologize, or you can send an email uh, to mvphomeless at palmbeachschools.org. Okay. All right. So at this time during the um, actual meeting, we opened it up for questions. And if you had um, anything that you wanted to add to the meeting, this is the time to do it. So as promised, I am linking uh, this presentation to our school website, as well as um, this recording. So if you need any um, more assistance, you can contact me. Um, the information for my contact is larry.harris at palmbeachschools.org, or you can reach me at the school at 561-776-3601. Thank you so much.